um, can go and uh, set up some rendering uh, or rendered views um, for Merit here. And uh, so as I was saying, I'm going to use perspective views or panel views to um, well, have rendered. And uh, so uh, again, on the quick access toolbar, you can always go to the down arrow there next to the little house, find the camera button, or on the view tab, uh, you'll find all the different viewing options. So it's important to know about that and realize that, uh, you know, of course, all the view controls are there. And uh, again, you've got the same option there, choose a camera. So there's just a couple of things about camera placement. Uh, the placement of the camera itself isn't too difficult because that's just your viewpoint. So just imagine where you would be standing to view uh, what you want to look at. And so, um, well, this you can see probably, uh, well, you can probably tell from the plan that that's uh, kind of an auditorium or a stage type setup that I was going for there. So maybe I'll do it from the uh, point of view of the audience. Maybe a little bit behind so I can see the seats and then the viewpoint, so the direction that you're looking. And that's mainly what you're setting with this. Don't too worry too much if you know about photography, don't worry too much about the focal depth at this stage. But, uh, but then you do need to think about the cropping. So if you don't take this target far enough, then things in the distance can be cropped out. So I'll do that. I'm going to take the target just to the front of that stage there. And uh, and so I can see the stage and what's in front of it, or well what's behind it, but I'll go back to the plan view so you can see that this wall, where it goes behind, is outside of the, the view range there. Now it may be that it's uh, too high anyway, but I'm going to uh, use the steering wheel or the navigation wheel over on the right. And I'm going to go to the pan and just bring that up, so I'm lifting my camera up in the air and then I can see the wall is there. That's the wall that's behind my stage. And I can't see it beyond that point. Okay, so that's the first thing with perspective views. Uh, when you have things missing, like that, you can always go back to a view like a plan, find the view in your 3D views, and perspective views generally going to have names like this, 3D view 1, and then the next one will be 3D view 2, and so on. You can rename them by right-clicking, and you can call them anything you like. So I'll call it perspective view. One, maybe. And then to see that view in the plan, I can right-click on it, on the name, and then show camera. And then it'll show me the camera again so that I can adjust either the camera position or, most importantly, the uh, cropping distance. Yeah, so dragging that clear or the open circle there so that it includes everything I want to see. I can then go back to my now perspective view one and then you can see them all there. So if you haven't done any photography, uh, Try and um, experiment a little bit with that. Even just using a phone camera, you can do a lot of things these days. And um, obviously when you take a photo, it's always in perspective because cameras have a lens just like your eyes. And that's why perspective views are so important because it's viewing in the same way you do. Cameras, your eye, and uh, well, they're the main things. Uh, viewing through a lens and uh, the other 3D views, isometric views, and plan views, elevation sections are non-perspective. So things don't change size in, in the view. In a perspective view, objects in the foreground are obviously bigger, things in the uh, background are smaller, and so there's no uniform scale, and that's the main concept with a perspective view. So you'll see it doesn't have a scale, whereas an elevation and a plan section, they're always going to have Uh, so, uh, we've still got the same uh, graphics options though, you can turn shading on and luminescence and all those things and that's worth trying. Uh, and then going over to the navigation wheel again, you've got a lot of view controls there. So up until now, I'm sure you've been using orbit and pan and zoom in your orthogonal views and they're really you know, useful controls here as well. Um, so I can still orbit 
and it works in a similar way, uh, but it's much more like uh, what you'd be used to uh, look, looking with your own eyes. You can pan, but again, it's a little bit different because, again, the, the perspective. Zooming also is a little bit different. We'll go into that. We'll look for that later. And uh, but then have a look at the ones in the middle. They're even in some ways more useful. So I'll just zoom that forward a little bit. You can see when I uh, go back and forwards with zoom, it might be hard to tell, but things are being stretched in a way that's maybe not uh, not good or not what you would want for a view like this. So can you see how those walls are starting to look pretty stretched out and distorted from that viewpoint? And so just so you can see what's really happening there, I'll pan and bring that down. So this wall here is sloping, looks like it's sloping more than it was before. And it's because it's widened the field of view. And so if I show you back in the plan view, okay, so again, right click, show camera. So notice how that cone's now wider relative to the camera. And again, if I drag that back, back in the perspective view. Another option, instead of zooming, is walking. So that's moving the camera instead of changing the field of view. So it'll move me backwards and eventually up. Right, so it's taking away those uh, things in the background there because my field of view isn't deep enough. So again, I can just stretch that out so that it's going to show more. And then back in perspective view, again, you can see more. So experiment with the navigation wheel. Uh, the walk tool seems to be the one that gives the most people trouble. Uh, but basically, when you click on walk, you'll get that little blue dot. And where you move relative to that is going to control the camera. So I'm just moving my arrow um, with the left mu uh, button down, backwards and forwards from that blue dot left and right is going to turn the camera and uh, it's pretty sensitive so just uh, practice with it and you'll get used to controlling that and walking around in your spaces uh, and then try the others as well so look is really important with cameras because orbit orbit will spin the view but it's spinning up you can see there around that pivot point which is where my target was so where I focused the camera initially it's rotating the camera around that point but if I use look, that's a, a lot more uh, like the way you'd rotate the camera if you were holding it. So it's well, they're just different rotating from different points. In, in some ways, it is more accurate because we're controlling. Oh yeah, we're with both of them. We are. Oh. So here we're rotating from the camera position. With orbit, you're rotating from the target position. And that's the way it's different. But so just think of it as a rubber band, and you can rotate from either end. And uh, so up and down as well, you're lifting the camera up and down from the, uh, the height that you're placing. That one's a bit tricky there. So uh, again, I'm going to go back to, uh, so I look so that I'm looking towards the stage area maybe and then pan and you can really play with the view a lot using those tools. Um, and uh, but don't forget as well, going back to the plan and... Um, frozen. There we go. So going back to the plan and adjusting the camera that way. Okay, so view setup is really important for rendering. And uh, then you can have uh, obviously a uh, shaded or a hidden line view just by using the graphics option. But then you've probably seen when you go to realistic, it'll start putting some of the render materials in. But that's not, still not a, uh, a true render. Rendering generally refers to the combination of lighting materials and, and the geometry that you've got. So I've just brought up the rendering dialog. It's down on the view control bar. You've got the little teapot with the light bulb on it. And again on the view tab, you've got the same thing, the render button. So 
wondering why it's a teapot, that's just an Autodesk thing that things render. If you see that teapot, it's an old piece of a 3D studio. Um, it used to mean, it was actually a 3D studio thing before they even <coughs> used it for rendering, but uh, anyhow, it's just an old Autodesk thing. So if you bring up that dialog box, you'll see the main render controls. And in Revit, you always have a light. It'll always have a sun as a minimum. So you don't even need to set that up, it's there. And uh, yeah, so if you've seen rendering in other programs, that's a, uh, a big thing. And then having the, um, the shadows on will give you an idea where that sun is. So the sun is there, having the shadows on in the view uh, just gives you an idea of the direction. Is it dramatically uh, By default it is, but I'll show you. If you go to just that sun button and go to sun settings, skip the path, don't worry about turning your sun path on or off because it's it's one of those tools I just don't find any use for. Uh, but the sun settings is, is really useful. So there, you can see it's just using a date, oh sorry, an angle at the moment. But if you go to still, then you've got the location here. And so it's picked up Australia because we've used the Australian template. But you can choose anywhere on the planet. So you can go and, uh, well, you can, it'll get it from uh, Google Maps automatically, but you can also go and get, uh, oh, I'll show you a full table of all the cities on the planet. So, uh, exactly, yeah. And so uh, I'll turn the ground plane off and then I'm just going to hit apply and now it's showing me the sun angle for 10 o'clock on the 1st of June. Uh, is that a.m.? Yeah, a.m. Yeah, so it's 24 hour clock and so it would be pretty overshadowed in the morning and that's what you'd expect midwinter. You don't get a lot of sun in the morning. In by midday, you'd get a bit more, yeah. but I'll, uh, sorry, uh, what's going on, why isn't it, oh, maybe I just did, oh, you're just changing, okay, so yeah, so that's right, one o'clock, uh, we get more, but it's, well, it's like we get more shadow, but it's winter, so it's always going to be at a steep angle, yeah. so yeah, it's great, and, and look, I know the angles of the sun pretty well, uh, especially for Sydney, because I've done a lot of shadow diagrams. But um, but even so, it's I often come in here and just try different dates and times to see what the sun's like when I've done a design. So is this like the same thing you use for the Minecraft Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So with um, uh, you know October sun at midday, it's going to be basically overhead. Yeah. Going to the morning, still be steep, but maybe not so much. And so that's casting shadow onto my state. So maybe I want to go for the afternoon and see if it'll come round the other way. And so that'll all come up in the in the render. One of the big things with Revit is having everything tied together in the one the one model. And so you can just go straight to your render dialogue and click render. It'll do something. It might not be great, but it will have lighting. It's got the sun there no matter what. All your objects have materials. So before you've assigned any materials, everything's going to have something, uh, but then you can you can change it all. So we've got exterior sun only, which for this scene works okay because we don't have a ceiling on top. And then uh, if you go to uh, interior sun only, it will basically be the same, just a bit darker. Yeah. So oh, so just if you want sun coming through the windows. So, uh, yeah, and so actually it's got a lot lighter there, sorry. And that's simply this thing called exposure. So again, it's one of those photographic concepts you've got to understand with rendering, because really you're working with light, which is, at the end of the day, a great thing, because because um, we need to, when you're working with... So, guys, can you keep it down, please? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, like I was saying, when you're uh, creating a rendered image, you're essentially working with light to create that, that final render, which is what you should be doing with your designs as well. Um, that's what people are going to see, and it's largely a visual, visual medium. So if you've got no idea about exposure, give it a go. It's a pretty simple thing to play with, but people get put off because sometimes you get either this, an all-white image, or the other extreme, an all-black image. And with photography, it's the same thing. People you know, take a photograph with just slightly wrong settings and nothing works and they get put off and panic and think it'll never work for me. But really, you'll always get there just by taking it up or down. 
So here, it's too, it's too bright, obviously. So I want it to be darker. So let's drag that slider a bit to the right. Apply. And it's making it darker. A bit more to the right. Apply. Darker again. More to the right. Apply. Darker still. Until we get the brightness we want. So just exposure, so I'll hit OK, and then if you just go to Adjust Exposure, and then it's the first slider at the top there, which is your exposure value. And so when you do some photography, you'll see that is a common setting in most cameras. So exposure value Exactly, exposure value set. Can you give a reference to that? Oh yeah, definitely, they're all good to use. Yeah, oh no, and it's not going to help you beyond that. So this is your main brightness control, and then these others are just a fine-tuning. And, uh, I mean, experiment with them, though. There are definitely good things to play around with there, but, uh, yeah, that you can't really go too wrong with those. So um, so that's got the brightness. I can see uh, what I want. Uh, and so I'm going to close this one now, and then look at a couple of other things, because aside from the render settings, and the lighting, which you get from the sun, there's one other main aspect to rendering, and that's materials. So just try and think of those main concepts always with rendering. You've got the geometry that you've modelled already to put your, create your designs, the form of your designs. Then you've got materials, which are going to give those, those objects colour and texture and all of the, and transparency, all those elements um, relate to the material. And then lighting, which lets you see those things. So those three things generally go together with your render settings to give you a rendered image. And so if I go to edit type here for the wall, click the edit button for the structure, and then this material is uh, finished, it's, it's assigned already, I want to change that material and assign a new one. So I'm going to hit browse, that'll take me to the material browser. Right now, I've gone through this briefly before, but do you remember very first step. It's a, not an easy one, but it's something you've got to remember with Revit. And this is something, so every time you assign materials, this is going to be the process. So it's finished at the moment. I want to make a new material based on that. So the first step is right click, duplicate. So now I've got a new material. And think of your materials as things separate to your objects. So you've got this abstract material space, like your material library that you create in every project. So this is similar to the material library, but you're actually creating it. Similar, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And so, uh, so I want it just to be a wall paint, so I'm going to call it wall paint. And then I'll give it a colour. So let's just make it a bit old red. And I've got a new material now. Now the next part, it's going to seem a bit strange, but just go with it. Go to the Appearance tab, right-click on that, and then replace. Or the replace button, I didn't choose that. So that's because it's already in the material library for the wall. Yeah. So you have to sort of change it. Change it. That's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, here, once I uh, go to replace, then you'll get the render material library. This is where it's a little bit confusing because you've really got two libraries that are working at the same time. So the appearance library there at the bottom is usually the best to start with. Click on the arrow and you'll get all the different subfolders. And so there's my wall paint folder and I can find something close to what I'm after. It doesn't need to be exactly what I want, just something close. So dark red is close enough. I'll double click on that. So, uh, so these are all just different colours. And then now if I close the asset browser, you'll see that's gone in to my wall paint red. Okay, so I've had to add a, a render paint material to that main Revit material. So then that's the appearance done. If I go back to graphics, all I need to do there is tick use render appearance and that'll bring that render colour into my graphics as well. So if you remember that process, you can use that basically every time you need to make a new material. So that's all just 3D Yes, yes. So if I click OK, it's 
remember, it's generic 100 mil wall that I've changed. So they now all will have wall paint red. Oh, so everything in that pack. Yep. That's <laughs> right, exactly. So I just wanted to see that. So all these walls are going to change because they're all generic 100 mil. But notice the walls at the back didn't change because they're generic 300 mil. And if I look at those, edit type, edit the structure, it still uses the finished material. So what if I wanted to have another 100 mil wall that isn't red? So that's, you know, it's just something to think about that you might need to do. Yeah. So I don't mind that layout actually, but then maybe I'll need some other walls that are also 100 mil. Okay, so just using the wall tool again, I'll draw another one, just using the same 100 mil wall. And, uh, well, I'll just draw it over to the side here. So it's also red because it's the same type or the same kind of wall. But if I go to edit type, I can duplicate it. So I can say, right, I want another kind of 100 mil wall that I want to be grey. Or white, really, but let's just say grey. Like this there. And then I'll edit that structure. So it's using wall paint red because that's what I said I want all the 100 mil walls to use. But now I can browse. The finished material is still there. I don't need to make it again. Once you've made the material, it's there for everything else in your project to use. So the finished material that the other wall uses is still in my list here. So that's chosen. OK, OK, OK. And now every time I need to use a grey wall, a 100 mil wall that's grey, I can simply go when I make my walls and choose, instead of the 100 mil plain wall, which is red, the grey one. So that's how you manage your objects generally, but also uh, your materials. And that's the main reason people sometimes have issues when they're assigning materials, because I mean, it's a simple thing to go and maybe uh, change, like I have there, the wall's material, thinking that you just want to change that particular wall's material, and you'll duplicate the material. But if you haven't duplicated the original wall type, all of those you know, wall types will change. And uh, so again, like a lot of things in Revit, it's about the management and how you set your objects up. So uh, again, in the plan view, you can see they show the material as well, but it's not maybe uh, what you're expecting. I'll just show you, if I select that wall, edit type, edit structure, finish, again, is the material uh, this wall uses. And if we go to browse, it's using that off-white color. This wall here is the uh, the red wall, but again, it's using well. We know it's got that off-white color, but in this view, it's grey. There's one final thing happening there with material. I can select this wall. Uh, if I can just go to edit type, and there's something I didn't show you that I'll kind of skip for now. The graphics there, which gives you your coarse scale material, so it's yet another material that you have for every object in there. And it's because, I mean, these things aren't obvious at first when you look at, compare it to other graphics programs or even other 3D programs, where they're really set up for one particular kind of work that people do. But with architectural and interior design drawings, you've got lots of different graphics that are required. And that's why you've got all these different options. So, uh, so it's a good thing to have these different options. Okay, and so there you can see the color. That's this gray color we can see there. Uh, but the important thing there is realising it's the coarse material. I'm not even going to change it. Down here, you've got the view, um, the detail level for the view, which is set to coarse. So that's why I can see that grey. If I go to fine, then it'll use the colour of the material. And then finally, if you want to see the actual uh, shading, you can shade it on, and now it's got the red. Uh, so just remember that, especially at first when you're starting to make your own materials, often the easiest thing to do is just go straight to fine if you're having trouble getting the materials showing up, in, especially in your plan. Uh, so, oh yeah, so I better get back and just do a little bit more rendering before I finish off on that. So I've shown you uh, rendering with the sun, but with interiors uh, especially, um, lighting is 
uh, well, artificial lighting is, um, if anything, more important than natural lighting. And uh, I mean, natural lighting is still important. Always think about how your spaces are going to be lit naturally by the sun. But uh, again, with interiors, you'll always have artificial lighting, and it's uh, you know important aspect of design. So, with artificial lights, you need an extra thing that you maybe haven't looked at yet, uh, and that's going to be a ceiling. Okay, so you've got the ceiling button on the architecture tab. And I don't know if anyone tried the ceiling tool. Yeah, it's a bit off-putting at first because you'll get this do not enter symbol, which um, shows you that it's not going to make anything at first. That's probably what you're going to get. But just remember, it's on automatic ceiling when you first start it. If you go to sketch ceiling, it's just the same as making a floor. It's no harder. So that's really what puts people off at first when you get that um, error symbol. So I'll just show you again. When you click on that ceiling button, just remember, go straight to sketch ceiling, and that should sort out most of the problem. So look at the height over there. You can see it's 2,600. 2, yeah, it's pretty low. Um, do you have any idea what um, ceiling height you might be looking at as a minimum? Do you know? Exactly. That's, that's your standard minimum height, and that's, so that's a good benchmark to remember. 2100 can go down to for bathrooms and other things. Uh, but then for, um, for decent habitable spaces, it's good if you can go up to uh, 3 metres these days, that's becoming more standard. 2800 is uh, another one that's pretty standard in inner city councils. But uh, again, uh, 3 metres you can go up to without too much trouble these days. Oh, 2800. Yeah. And uh, so I'm going to go to 3 metres though. And then uh, draw my shape, just like you draw a floor. You can draw a rectangle uh, in this space, and that will cover it over. Tick to finish, and it disappears, because this is a floor plan. The ceiling's above, and so I've drawn it looking down. Have a look at your ceiling plans, and you might be able to see it. So there we are. There's my ceiling. Um, but we haven't gone too much into ceiling plans. I don't know if you've drawn them for other projects you have. Oh, good. So you know about reflected, that they're reflected plans? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. They're, yeah, mirror image, yeah. That's right. And so, yeah, yeah. But it is, it's basically, it is rotated. It's rotated 180 that way and then 180 that way. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but it's not obvious at first because uh, a, a floor plan is projected the same way, which is um, natural for a floor plan, but obviously upside down for a ceiling. And uh, so I've drawn the ceiling, you can see there in the section view, just um, floating above the ground. But I can still select it here and either drag it up or type in a new height over there. And uh, for now, that's all I'll show you for setting your ceiling heights. There are other ways, but that's, that's not too bad if you just type in a height from the ground and that's going to give you, uh, you know, a good way of getting it uh, up to the height you want. And so now I want to go and place some lights in that ceiling. And well, it's a bit of a trick question. Which plan? Which well, I'll tell you which time. Which ceiling plan do you think I should be looking in to see my ceiling now? Level one. Level one, exactly. That's right. So yeah, that's good. So yeah, because ground floor is too low. Now, I can't see the ceiling anymore. It's there, but looking from the ground floor, we're only looking up a certain distance, and that's not enough to see the ceiling. So I'll go to level one. Can't see the ceiling there either. And it's for the same reason. We, this is the right view, but I need to change some things so I can see everything. Okay, so again, zooming out, nothing there. Looking in the view property, and if you don't get that, just make sure um, everything's deselected. Press escape uh, twice, and then whichever view you have open, uh, you'll get the view properties for that. Okay, so just down here it says ceiling plan, and then scrolling down in there, you'll see view range. I don't think I've shown you this one yet. Have we not? 
So it's something you might have thought about. If you click edit there, you'll see it's got this really important option, upload. So you might have been thinking, which height am I cutting through this plan? So you can put openings in that are maybe high or low. And when you've been drawing your own floor plans by hand, you might have thought about this. When you draw windows and things, uh, maybe you're thinking about how high they're being cut through so that you see them in projection. And it's something you should always think about with every floor plan. A plan is just a horizontal section. And when you're designing windows that are high or low, you've got to allow for that in your drawing. So here, my cut plane is 23 metres, or sorry, 2.3 metres. That's higher th even than my walls on this level. So I'll make that 1,000. Exactly, yep. Okay, so I'll hit apply. Now I can see my walls. I still can't see the ceiling though. And that's because it's not looking, it's actually um, still too high. And this view isn't looking high enough. It's on level above. So I'm going to change the top to unlimited. And the view depth as well, just trying to remember this one, the view depth always needs to be as high as the top. So both unlimited is a good way of just making sure you can see everything. Viewing from infinity. So if I click OK, now I can see the ceiling as well. And you need that. You need to be able to see the ceiling so you can do the last thing, which is placing some lights. And you do that with component. So with the component button, you don't need to use model and place here, just place a component and you can go through your life using the library. Um, there's a lot in there when you click load family. And then there'll be a lighting folder. And then in architectural, uh, internal, you've got a lot of good uh, lights to start with. So I'm just going to go for downlight spot. And, uh, oh sorry, no, downlight recess can, sorry. And then uh, open. And then I'm just going to place some lights uh, along the wall here. Just fairly roughly, I won't line them up exactly. Is there a way of setting it so they are the same? Oh yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So reference planes and things like that will let you line them up. But this is, well it's actually snapping now, so that's going to line up pretty well. Just um, doing this by clicking. So you can definitely set them out accurately and do all those other things. But I just want to have a row of lights there so that I can go back to that perspective view. Okay, we can see the lights up there. If we zoom in, there they are. Yeah, exactly, they're on. So if I go into the render dialog again, now I can simply change this to interior artificial only, which is usually the best if you want just the lights. Because the sun is thousands and thousands of times brighter than any man-made light source. So it's... Um, not sufficient for you, but yeah, as a, as a whole it is actually. So uh, so you're never going to get that balance. It's very difficult to balance natural lighting and artificial lighting. But if you just turn the sun off, it's much easier to get your artificial lights doing something. Okay, so there we are. I can see those lights up there. Uh, they might look a little bit dim, but just remember what we were looking at before with exposure. So adjust exposure again. And now I'm going to make it brighter by dragging it slightly to the left. Apply, just a bit more, apply, and we can start to get normal illumination level. So I'll go and uh, back in my level one ceiling plan. Now I want to have some lights that are maybe over the set area, the stage area. So if I go and put the, um, uh, sorry, the, uh, in the view properties, the underlay, I'll change to ground floor. So that should give me a grayed out view of that plan. And now if I go to place... Just means you can choose any level. Exactly, yeah. Or above, you can, you can actually choose any level. Okay. But yeah, it just sort of yeah, does a little bit of transparency. And uh, so now with component, again, I could choose the same lights, or I'm just going to go load family again, back to lighting fixtures, or lighting, sorry, architectural, <laughs> internal, and this time I'll get the spot, downlight spot. And the space bar will rotate them. If you're lucky, it'll pick up elements. No, because it's underlay, but it won't. So I'll just do it at the normal angle. It's okay. So back in my perspective view. 
might be a bit hard to see them here because uh, of the perspective, but I can always drag this up, and there we go. I can see there's one, there's one there, and there are my others. So again, we know that should give us some light. So back to render, render button. Oh well, it has to re-render it. It is. It does save it. So, if you when you close the view or if you click show the model, it'll go back to the shaded view. But even if you've closed this, if you bring that render dialog back up, you can always just click show the rendering, and it brings it back. <laughs> so remember, that's on low quality. That's draft. You can increase the quality here, and that'll take longer. So I don't want to sit and force you to watch that uh, rendering. So another option is rendering cloud. So that sends it off to these supercomputers over in San Francisco. And uh, for that, you'll need to sign in first. Okay, so just using the uh, username and password that you use to download the software. Okay, so you'll see your username should come up there once you've signed in. There we are. And then you can just click Rendering Cloud, Continue. Hope this one, yep, there we are. The next one, choose your quality. I just would set it to final most of the time. And there we go, because their computer's doing the work. Uh, set the size, which. Um, Again, you can usually just go for the larger sizes. That's a big image, nine, pe nine megapixel is, is big, but that's all right. Uh, so actually, maybe I'll go down just large, just so I finish it a bit quicker. And then all the other options uh, you can usually just leave. So start, sends it off to Stats. You don't even need to hit continue here. You can just leave it and it'll disappear on its own once it's sent. There we are, done. So then um, you should be able to then go to the main, uh, to your uh, login or the uh, sign on button and then just go to render progress and it'll take you to the site for Autodesk 360. Uh, here we are. So this is the logon if you uh, don't see this, then it just means the browser's uh, causing some problems. Okay, so there it is. That's the rendering I've just sent on this page. And uh, if I click on it, it'll probably show me something already. It won't take an hour. I know it says an hour. It'll take no, nothing like that. Ten minutes, I'd say. Oh, now it's in a queue, right? So it'll just take a minute before it shows me, shows me that. But uh, anyway, it's really quick, and it'll be much, much better quality than you'll be able to do on these computers. Yeah, it's getting more popular though, so there is a bit of a queue. Sometimes a lot of people use it. Oh, there's no best time because in America they're up at different times to us, yeah. and then you've got you know guys in Dubai and everywhere using it. So uh, anyhow, otherwise, uh, think about the quality options there. I'm not going to go for the really high ones, but medium won't take too long. That's definitely um, your main quality setting. But you also have resolution. That definitely affects your quality. And if you go to printer and 300, that's a good quality, but 150 is reasonable. So with render there, that would be better than what I had it. Well, you are, but with the graphics software. So the idea is that you have hidden line and shaded views uh, to begin with from the model um, that you'll, you know, when they exist. Uh, and then, um, so I'm just using this to give an intro to rendering because we're not going to come back to it until we get to the end of the next project. And uh, exactly, yeah. 
Okay, so you can see it's it's sorted out a lot of the issues. It is definitely better quality, but um, you know it could be definitely better still. But I won't wait for the uh, 361. That looks like there's a bit of a queue there. Oh wait, here we go. That's not him. No, I won't wait for it. So I'll just finish the video there. But um, hopefully that gives you a pretty good overview of rendering and the main concept. So I'll. Uh, yeah, I'll give you something to help in a little while, but if you just maybe try some of those things out, you can work on your styles as well. Yeah, yeah look, it's a great option. Once you know it's there and that you can, yeah, 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 yeah. make a few treatments, yeah.